this short video, I'm going to demonstrate watershed delineation using Arc Hydro tools within ArcGIS Pro. A couple of things before getting started with this video. Number one, a couple of years ago, I have recorded a video called Watershed Delineation. I'm going to put it on the screen and also a link in the description section. In that video, I go over the theory of watershed delineation using geographic information systems such as ArcGIS Pro. So highly recommend to watch the beginning of that video. And in the second part of that video, I talk about the internal and built-in functions and tools within ArcGIS Pro that allows you to do watershed delineation. In this video, however, I'm going to use the tools within the Arc Hydro Pro toolbox that you need to download and install first and then be able to do watershed delineation. So that's one difference. The other thing is the only data set that you need for watershed delineation is going to be a digital elevation model. This digital elevation model, right now I have a 90 meter digital elevation model. You can use whatever digital elevation model that you have for your study area. Now let me show you how you can download Arc Hydro. In order to download Arc Hydro for ArcGIS Pro, you need to go to this website that you can see on your screens. So when you click on this website, you are going to be linked to this page. On this page, there are multiple tabs. We are going to download Arc Hydro for ArcGIS Pro. And the version of ArcGIS Pro that I'm using is 3.1. So I have already downloaded and installed Arc Hydro for ArcGIS Pro 3.1. The last tab over here, it gives you links to some documents that are very useful and I highly recommend checking them out. All right, so you are gonna download this and install that and I will show you what happens once you install Arc Hydro. Once you install Arc Hydro, you need to close ArcGIS Pro and reopen it. And then when you go under analysis and click on tools and then go under toolboxes, you will see that there is Arc Hydro Tools Pro popping up under toolboxes, which has lots of other toolboxes with different tools for um, hydrologic and hydraulic modeling and lots of other useful tools. We are going to use some of these tools today to be able to delineate watersheds for our study area. Okay, let's get started then. In order to do watershed delineation, you need to follow a number of steps. These steps are listed in the description section of this video under table of contents, and you can see what steps I'm gonna take and what tools I'm gonna to run. You need to follow them in order to be able to delineate your watershed. All right, if you wanna know more about the details and the theory behind each, each of these steps, I highly recommend watching the video that I have recorded before. Again, I will link it on the screen and also in the description section of this video. Let's get started with our delineation. So first of all, I do have my um, digital elevation model here. This digital elevation model that I downloaded from United States Geological Survey is not hydrologically conditioned. It means that the artificial sinks and sometimes natural sinks that stop flow from stop water from flowing are not filled. So the first step that we want to do is to fill the sinks. So again, under analysis, I'm going to click on tools and under find tools, I'm going to search for fill sinks. Okay. So one important note is that you want to use all the toolboxes that say Arc Hydro Pro. There are other toolboxes, there are other fill functions that are built in for ArcGIS Pro, but we are in this video, we are going to use Arc Hydro Pro tools. So click on that. It will ask you for your digital elevation model. I'm going to select that. And then it will generate an output name for you. We are not going to change any of these output names because they will help you to find the files, file, files later. Okay. The other two are optional. If you want to have a tr threshold for filling up e these depressions and sinks, you can add that threshold in form of elevation and others that we are not going to talk about in this video. Okay, let's run this. It will generate a raster, an integer raster for you like this. You might ask, why does it look like that? First of all, let me uncheck this and close it. So if you right click on it and go to symbology, you can change unique values to stretch and 
essentially now you can see a better looking raster over here. Okay, closing the symbology. So this was the first um, step. The second step is going to be finding the flow directions. If I zoom in, you can see that this raster is essentially a photo with lots of pixels or grids. Flow direction is going to find the direction that water flows in each of these pixels or rasters. So what I'm going to do is going to search for flow direction and choose the one that says Arc Hydro Pro in front of it. It asks for your hydrologically conditioned DEM, which is the one that we just created, fill. And it, it, it's going to create another raster called flow direction or FDR. Perfect. If you have some sort of walls, levees, or dams, you can add a shape file to that and it will automatically consider that in the flow direction um, calculations too. I don't have it, so I'm going to keep it empty. Let's run it and see how the raster is going to look like. Well, this is the raster and each color represents one specific direction. Okay. Now, I don't need it. I just need to create it. Later, it, flow direction will be input for another thing. Next, I'm going to create flow accumulation. Flow accumulation is a number that tells me how many cells upstream of one specific cell are going to contribute water to that specific cell. So I am going to search for it, flow accumulation, find it, and then the input is flow direction, so FDR, and the output would be FAC, flow accumulation. Again, run it, you will see that it creates another raster for me. The raster is created, but the color scheme is not that good, so you cannot understand what's going on. I'm going to right-click on it and then go to Symbology, and instead of this color scheme, I'm going to maybe select something more, maybe this. Okay, now this is better. So now you can see that these are numbers or areas that contribute to that specific cell. Obviously, if I zoom out, you can see that whenever I have a stream, the flow accumulation is higher. That means that the area that contributes water to a stream is obviously higher, and the area that contributes to other pieces of land is going to be lower. Okay, so that explains the flow accumulation raster. Again, I'm going to close the symbology. Now, now that I have the flow accumulation, I can define the streams. I can't, there is a function for that that automatically defines those streams for me. And um, conveniently, it's called stream definition. So stream definition would be the first one that has Arc Hydro Pro in front of it. It asks me for the flow accumulation raster. It automatically is going to, uh, it's going to actually give you the, these two numbers. One is in the area. What is this area? And you can change this area. And I will do it to show you how it's going to look like. This is the area that the program is going to use to generate your streams. The lower this number is, the lower the square kilometer stream definition is, the more branches of rivers you're going to have. Okay. But Let's create it with about 64 square kilometer first, and I'm going to click run just to show you how it's going to look like. So now I'm going to turn off my flow accumulation. You can see that the streams are created over here. These are my streams. Now, what if I change 64 square kilometer to 10 square kilometer? As I told you, when this number is lower, you're going to have more streams, more small streams. So I'm going to click run to show you how it's going to look like. Now, take a look at the changes. You definitely have more streams. You have teeny tiny streams formed over here that might not represent the reality of your watershed. Okay, so this is a number that you need to play with and then check with the map that you have to make sure you have correct streams formed over here. For this demonstration purpose, I'm going to go back to 60... 3.8, I think it was 63.8, and run it again to give me just the main streams, the more important streams over here. All right, so now that I define the streams, and again, I'm going to check it off and make some space over here. There we go. The next step is to divide these, um, divide this line into segments. Not all of these lines represents 
one stream. This is a separate stream, this is another separate stream, and this is a separate stream. So I wanna make sure that I can divide these streams into multiple streams. In Arc Hydro, that's called stream segmentation. So I, I'll go back and I search for stream segmentation, and you can see that the first one is the stream segmentation. So uh, the input stream raster would be str.tif, and then flow direction is fdr, and it's going to create another raster called str link. Perfect. I'm going to run it, and it will now you can see that different streams have different colors. That means that the stream have been segmented or divided into separate streams. Okay, now that I have this, I need to create uh, catchments. Catchments are those small watersheds, right? And it's going to create it for the entire digital elevation model. So if your digital elevation model is very big, I recommend clipping it to the extent of your study area so it's not going to take a long time. All right, um, let's do next. I'm going to go back and do catchment grid processing. Catchment grid processing. Grid delineation, excuse me. Okay, so the first one is catchment grid delineation. I'm going to click on that asks for flow direction raster, which was FDR, asks for the input link raster, which was STRLNK, your stream links, and then it's going to create another raster that is called CAT, catchment.tiff. Let's run that. You can see that now it has created all these catchments in a raster format. So um, these are all different um, catchments, but I don't want these in raster format. I want these catchments in a polygon format. So what I can do is to search for a tool within Arc Hydro Pro Tools called Catchment Polygon Processing. So Catchment Polygon Processing, there we go, right over here. It asks you for your catchment raster, cat.tiff, and it creates your for a polygon that gives you all the catchments. Let's run it. You will see in a couple of seconds that a raster, there we go, has been created for you that has all these polygons. How do I know they're polygons? If you right click on it and go to attribute table, you can see that all these polygons have the shape, um, length and shape area associated with them. All right, so these are your catchments. I'm gonna turn them off and the next step is to convert the streams from these uh, rasters to polyline this time. So the tool that we are going to run is drainage line processing. Again, how do you how do I know which tool I should run. In the description section of the video under table of contents, there's a list that tells you what what steps I'm taking right now. Okay, drainage line processing. Stream link raster is strlnk. Next one is input flow direction raster. Flow direction raster is fdr, this one. And I'm not gonna change the output names over here, drainage line. And that this is a table that is gonna be also created for us as well. I'm gonna run it after a couple of seconds. You can see the polyline that I have that represents all the rivers in my digital elevation model. All right, these are all the rivers that have been created in the digital elevation model. Um, I definitely want to change the line into water and then go to properties and maybe change the color to another blue and change the thickness, apply it. There we go. Okay, now you can see all the rivers that have been created for my digital elevation model. The next step is to create the adjoint catchments. So we already created the smaller catchments, the smaller sub-watersheds. Now we are going to join these sub-watersheds together to create larger basins and larger watersheds. Um, in order to do that, and let me actually 
turn this off. In order to do that, the tool that you need to find is called Adjoint Catchment Processing. So I'm going to search for that Adjoint Catchment Processing, this first one. I'm going to click on that. Asks for um, drainage line feature. Line. Asks for um, input catchment feature class. It's the catchment over here. And then the outputs are a joint catchment and a table that is going to be created as well. I'm not going to change the default names for outputs. And then run, you will see that after a couple of seconds, the larger catchments are created. And here are the larger catchments that you can see. This this one, for example, that I selected right now, this is the lower Minnesota River uh, subbasin. Now that you have your joint catchment, I'm going to turn it off. I don't need it anymore. Uh, the last step to be able to um, delineate to a point is going to be um, point delineator. Point delineator. Okay, this one, point delineator for Arc Hydro Pro. If you click on it, you will see that it asks for a point feature that shows you the outlet of the watershed. So you need to create a point feature to, sh to signify to represent the outlet of the watershed. Let's say that we want to put the point feature right over here, right over here, to create the watershed that contributes to that point. How do we do that? Okay, so under view, I'm going to go under catalog pane, and then this under, so just to show you how it looks like, under folders, you can see that this is the uh, ArcGIS Pro project that I have created, Watershed Delineation Demo. You can see the name over here as well. So if you expand that, we're going to create that point feature. So let's, if you right click on this folder, I'm going to create a new um, shape file. And this shape file, I'm going to call it outlet. And it's going to be a point feature. So it's not going to be a polygon. It's going to be a point. Create that point feature for me. And you can see that right now I have an outlet, but there's no outlet over here because I haven't defined any outlet. So in order to do that, I'm going to go under edit and create. It asks me which layer do you want to create something? I want to create a point in the outlet. And automatically, this point is selected. So if I go to the map, you can see the cursor is a plus sign. So I'm going to zoom in to this area. And I'm going to put a point on this line, maybe right over here. Now you can see that there is a point on the line over here. OK. It is very important when you have done that, Click Save, and it asks you if you want to save it. Yes. And now, once you're done, you need to click on Clear. So you can see that the point have been created over here. Close this Create feature. We don't need it anymore. And now, just to make this a little bit more visible, I'm going to click on the Symbology over here, and go to Gallery, and click on Circle 3. There we go. Now, if I zoom out, I can see the outlet that I have selected way better. OK, now in geoprocessing, I'm going to go back and find point delineation again, point delineator again. Now I do have a point that I want to delineate based off. So the outlet would be the point that I want to. Flow direction, because I didn't change the name of it, it's automatically selected over here. Let's select it. So FDR is right over here. String is STR. That's your stream raster. Drainage line, your, um, uh, your drainage line would be selected right over here. And then catchment is going to be this one. A joint catchment is going to be this one. The snap distance is also important. So if you zoom in, you can see that I did a good job on putting the point exactly on this line. If you download your point from another data set, there is a possibility that the point does not match your streamline. When that happens, if you define snap distance, 
it tells the program that if the point is right over here, snap it to the line automatically. Okay, that's how snap distance work. Now, the last thing, it asks you where do you want to save the results. So I'm going to create a workspace. So click on that. In the watershed delineation demo, I'm going to create a geodatabase, and I'm going to call it maybe demo. OK. And then click OK. So now my result watershed and the point, the outlet point, is going to be saved in this geodatabase. And what I'm going to do, click on Run and wait to see the watershed that is going to be created. All right, processing is done. You can see that there are two layers that have been added to my uh, map. One is this layer, which is the extent of your watershed, and the other one is this point, which is the outlet. So I'm going to turn off the outlet. Now you can see that the watershed has been created exactly for that point as an outlet that I have selected. I could put the point right over here or over here or over here to create a watershed exactly where I want to. Perfect. Now, we followed many steps, right? There is a way that you can make this easier if you are doing watershed delineation multiple times, and that is going to be creating a model. Creating a model will allow you to make a process automatic. So you just put the input into the model, and it will automatically delineate that for you. Okay? Now, uh, let's see how it works. Let, first of all, I'm going to show you the model that I have developed. So under View and then Catalog Pane, under uh, Toolboxes, I've already developed a toolbox called Arc Hydro Delineation. Okay, and now I'm going to right-click on the model that I have created and click on Edit to show you how the model looks like. So as you can see, I have fill sinks, flow direction, flow accumulation, everything, all the steps that I went through connected to each other. Everything that is in yellow is going to be the toolbox. Everything that is blue is your input data, like digital elevation model, like your output, and so on and so forth. And everything in green is the output of specific toolbox. For example, stream definition gives you the stream a raster, and that would be the input for a stream segmentation that gives you stream links. So creating this uh, model will help you to make this process faster and faster. Okay, and uh, you can use this model pretty easily as well to create your watershed. How does this work? Let me show you. Actually, I'm not going to save this. I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to use this model to show you how it works. So double click on the model, and it asks you for your DEM and the outlet. My DEM is going to be the 90 meter DEM. And uh, the outlet is going to be maybe, yeah, the same outlet that I selected over here. You need to create a new um, file geo database. I'm going to do that. And over here, I'm going to uh, create one file geo database. And this time, last one I called it demo. This time I'm going to call this demo one. All right, and I'm going to select that. You can see this is selected, and that's all you need to do. When I run this, it's going to go over all those processes like fill sinks, flow direction, flow accumulation, everything that we went through together. It's going to automatically go through that model that I have created and then give you your watershed in a couple of seconds. This makes your job much easier if you know that you're going to do watershed delineation multiple times. So I highly recommend and create a model based on the process that you have done. All right, so the model is done. The model is completed, but we can we cannot see any results over here. The thing is that you need to go and add the results to your map. How, what do I, how do I do that? So if you go under folder 
And demo one is the geo database that we have created. There we go. And then I have my watershed right over here. And I have the watershed point. Let me turn off the outlet so you can see the watershed point a little bit better. I'm going to grab and add the watershed point over here too. You can see that it's been added right over here. Okay, so the model builder is going to make the process way faster. Again, let me know in the comments section if you want me to add a video on how to create the model builder, the model builder for watershed delineation.